So Mission Impossible 7 is here, and no surprise, it's all sorts of gangster fire. We are the gold standard! And yeah, uh, while Tom Cruise being the new sacred cow of broken records, like the critical drinker is somewhat cringeworthy, the guy threw himself off a cliff on a motorcycle for our entertainment, and you just gotta respect that. And yeah, when it comes to Hollywood weirdos named Tom, he's certainly got a leg up on the competition. But yeah, anyways, I'll tell you what I kind of dislike is comparative criticism when it's really bleeding obvious. You have people who are like, guys, it's better than Dial of Destiny. No shit! These movies have been awesome for a while now, especially the Christopher McQuarrie ones, or uh, McHugh, as he's known to his homies. Hey, McHugh. And yeah, what works about these movies for me is the variety of the action sequences. There's not really two set pieces in a given film that bleed together. It's not, you know, Keanu doing gun fu for three hours. Speaking of movies with boring wallpaper narratives, the Mission Impossible movies have never been amazing in that regard. It's usually nuclear warheads or something really stale. This one, however, was a bit more interesting. I had a feeling this movie might have some some sus plot elements, considering they made it at the height of insert scam here, which uh, obviously led to that epic Daddy Cruz meltdown. We are not shutting this movie down! And not to derail this too much, but I didn't realize that there were parodies of it, and uh, they're pretty great. What did I say? What did I say? Everything has to be symmetrical! I what Anderson! I'm in the Grand Budapest Hotel! You think I can't f your wife? <laughs> Anyways, yeah, the plot of this movie is all about AI, and uh, it's very fourth industrial revolution, Klaus would be proud. But yeah, it was basically just Tom Cruise versus Agenda 2030, so it was nice to have some actual stakes in the film. And uh, yeah, it was uh, pretty narratively engaging in a snakes behind glass kind of way, you know, keep, the, keep that AI garbage away from me. But yeah, uh, regardless, the actual design of the Entity MacGuffin was memorable, the music helped underscore it nicely as well, I was like, oh my gosh, it even has a leitmotif. Either way, I felt like the music in the last one, while good, felt a bit too Diet Coke Zimmer. Very, uh, put me in the game, coach, I'm ready. This one switched things up a bit, though. I don't know if I want to say it was Discount Howard Shore, or maybe a bit of old school Elfman, but uh, it was good stuff. Damn. You did good, son. Thank you, sir. And yeah, something these films do well is throwing in a new cast member to inject a bit of fresh blood into the series. Obviously, in the last movie, you had Henry Cavill kicking ass with one of the most expensive, problem-causing mustaches of all time. And yeah, this one has Haley Atwell, who is quite good in the movie, uh, certainly a better film for her than, a. Uh, Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway, Midden's Voice, freaking hell. Well, la dee da No, God, please, no! And yeah, I'm very glad that I avoided every trailer for this movie, because I did not see the Tom Cruise cliff jump scene until I was sitting in the theater. And yeah, it's all sorts of awesome. I mean, it's completely contrived the way they get to it, but I just couldn't care less. Anyways, I'm gonna get into a few negatives with the film, because while it's overall very good, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning is filled with shit moments. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning is filled with shit moments. Moment. The pace is the pace is perfect. It's the perfect length. So this movie, while being surprisingly well paced, honestly, it felt about 30 minutes shorter than the runtime to me. It takes a minute to get going, and this is not helped by the awful scene near the beginning, where the feds are just sitting around dumping exposition and the most unnatural dialogue you've ever heard. The scene just goes on for way too long, and they throw in a bit of self-deprecating humor, like impossible. Mission Force? Yeah, that's dumb. Very MCU-esque, felt like a nod to the TikTok generation who's, you know, jaded and, uh, 
Lame. Just, just jaded and lame. I can't think of anything better to say. You kids out here with your quantum Iron Man in the multiverse of garbage. What's up, guys? I got the new Grimace milkshake from McDonald's. Anyways, the feds are all like, Tom Cruise, you need to find Rebecca Ferguson. And they pull up this crap graphic with wanted $50 million in this diagonal red aerial font, and it looked so cheap that it felt like something I could have made for a thumbnail with Apple Preview. Also, not really a spoiler, but there's a scene where characters have to solve riddles at a certain point in the movie, and they legit just straight up threw in, what's always coming but never arrives? I was like, oh my gosh, are you serious? Are you serious? Anyways, small gripes aside, this movie was pretty freaking solid. It managed to feel surprisingly not stale, despite being the seventh one, and it's exactly what you want from a summer blockbuster. It's well-directed, has that undeniable Papa Cruz charisma going for it, and yeah, it has that everything in the kitchen sink action you've come to expect. It doesn't reinvent the wheel by any means, but you walk out of it thinking, I was thoroughly entertained for three hours, and I don't feel radically dumber for having watched this. Anyways, here's my ranking of the series for good measure. This one might be better than Ghost Protocol on a second viewing, but uh, I'd have to rewatch it to know. And yeah, for the two contrarians who are currently typing in the comments section, Mission Impossible 2 still sucks ass. What are you gonna do? Spank me. <laughs> Anyways, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, leave your thoughts on the film, subscribe if you're new, and uh, look forward to a special double review next week for hashtag Barbenheimer. So spicy. <laughs> it's fair enough to say. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to join me for this mostly spoiler-free review. I love my popcorn. Movies, popcorn. With a 99% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh my god, who the hell cares?